A very warm welcome to the Amersham Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this episode of Thought for Sunday. My name is the Reverend Adam Wells and I am the Superintendent Minister of the Amersham Circuit of the Methodist Church. You are most welcome whether you're joining us for the first time or have been here many times. Please don't forget to subscribe because then you will get notifications when the channel goes on air, including sometimes even some of our unexpected practice sessions when we forget to make them private. This is Thought for Sunday for Sunday the 3rd of September 2023. To get us into the mood of worshipping God, of thinking about our faith, we turn to singing the faith to number 51. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father.
the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 9. Paul writes, Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was trying to think of two sentences to sum up the passage. These are what I came up with. The yardstick of love for verses 9 to 13, and the power of love for verses 14 to 21. In the previous couple of verses, the ones before this passage, Paul has been talking about spiritual gifts. Here and in other parts of his writing, he's very keen that all those activities which we might label charismatic are tested. So looking at verses 9 to 13, we ask of any gifts or offer of ministry. Is this love genuine? Not to be driven by motives other than self-giving love. Does it do good? Paul says, choose good over evil. Obvious, but sometimes difficult to discern. Does it produce and promote brotherly and sisterly love, or as Paul has it, mutual affection? Does it promote hope? We should be hopeful. Paul says, rejoice in hope. Does it promote prayer? Paul says, persevere in prayer. Is it self-giving? Paul says, contribute to the needs of the saints, that's other members of the church. Extend hospitality, and remember how important hospitality was and is in the Middle East. The early church would not have spread as quickly without the hospitality of those who welcomed the first evangelists into their homes. Like Simon the Tanner, hosting Peter in Acts 10. Paul sees this discernment, or yardstick of love as I have called it, as particularly important in assessing leaders. James Dunn in his People's Bible Commentary on Romans points out that the charismatic strand of Christianity is no stranger to the phenomenon of prophet, 
becomes guru, becomes leader, becomes dictator. We've seen this in our own time and the need for discernment of gifts is vital. We should test all we do with the yardstick of self-giving love. Then verses 14 to 21. We need to remember that Paul was writing to lots of small house churches scattered around the city of Rome. Remember also that this was a time of persecution when following Jesus was not always looked upon with favour by neighbours, let alone those in authority or with influence. Look at what Paul says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. He's definitely not advocating protest if it can be avoided. And then verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. It's about getting alongside people, especially those in any kind of need. About living in harmony, not being haughty associating with the humble and being humble. Isn't this self-giving love in practice? And it is a very powerful thing because the power of love is shown in the way we behave to those we meet, to those whom we have known for a long time. And as Christians, we need both of these discernments in relation to loving and living out our lives in the most loving way we can. We need the yardstick of love to judge our actions and to look carefully at those who offer for work in the church. And we need the power of God as we display the love that Jesus showed to those who knew him. The challenge for us is to do these two things. Amen. I thought we'd have a look at number 608 in Singing the Faith, or praised our redeeming Lord, who joins us by his grace. Have a good week. Heights of rapture shall we know when round his throne.